Hey guys, today we have another build your own battery kit from Basin Green. This kit is designed to fit 16 of Eve's 314 amp hour cells, that's over 16 kilowatt hours of stored energy. This case will also accommodate Eve's 280 or 304 amp hour cells, and it fits similar offerings from Lycian and Rept as well, pretty much any cell with these same physical dimensions and terminal placement. This kit includes everything you need to assemble your own battery, allowing you to bring your own cells or purchase them from a distributor of your choice, such as Basin Green. This is quite a large case. It hardly fits on my workbench here. It measures 17 inches in width, 31 inches in depth, including the terminals, and 10 inches in height. Taking a look at the front of the case, we have our main positive and negative terminals. We have two of each, and they do appear to be standard M8 bolts. We have a very large circuit breaker, an on-off switch, our BMS display, our BMS control buttons, we have a state of charge indicator, some addressing and status information, a series of communications ports, and a Bluetooth antenna. We have a small grounding screw, and then of course we have our collapsible handles. Let's take a look inside the case. Uh, first off, the lid is protected with a layer of epoxy board. Inside the case, the cells are oriented in two rows of eight. There's a support bracket running across the top, and on top of that support bracket, we have a PCB or a printed circuit board. The PCB has a number of red leads coming off here. These are going to be the balance leads. So one of these will connect to each of the series connections between the cells. Let's go ahead and fold down the front lid. So the first thing that stands out to me is this massive circuit breaker. I mean, here you can see comparison versus the size of my hand. Next up, we have two BMSs, or rather one BMS and one balancer. So this is the primary BMS. It does look like a pace style. The second one is going to be located back here, and this is a two amp active balancer. And actually, I do see it says 16, which I assume is the cell series, and five amp. So maybe it's a five amp active balancer. I personally am not a fan of active balancers. I mean, they're great when you're commissioning the battery for the first time, they'll get it balanced quickly, but once your battery's balanced, you should not need an active balancer. We have a few miscellaneous cables down here. This is the main power for the BMS. We have the communications to the Bluetooth module, power switch, and then a few communications cables to the front display and communications ports. Here's a quick look at the very large circuit breaker. It is CHC YZO brand and it does have a 200 amp rating. Taking a look at the included accessories, we have a large stack of fiberglass insulative sheets. We have four pieces of uh, neoprene foam here, high density foam, and then of course we have a pair of two rack ears. We have a long balance cable here for the active balancer. We have a pack of communications cables here for the BMS. There's one USB for your computer. There's the gray one goes to your inverter for communications to your inverter, and then the white one will be linking two battery packs together. We have a very nice pack of flexible multi-layer bus bars, a bag of serrated flange nuts for the battery terminals, and these look like the M8 bolts for the main terminals on the front, and some plastic covers for the terminals on the front. For this build, I'll be using these EVE MB31. These are 3.2 volt, 314 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells. These are from Bassin Green as well. And man, these cells are flawless. I've inspected every single one. They are in pristine condition. They're lined up on my bench here, and look, there is zero space between any of the cells. And based on the labels that are on the side of the box here, it looks like they shipped uh, 200 cases of these cells. One case holds four cells, so that's 800 of these cells to the U.S. These cells have an incredible lifespan. They are rated for 8,000 cycles, according to the manufacturer's data sheet from EVE. That is down to 70% state of health, and that's being charged and discharged at a 0.5 C rate, or roughly 157 amps. To put that into perspective, if you cycle these cells every single day, once a day, that's nearly 22 years. This battery kit comes with a very nice printed instruction manual. It's printed in color, it's very detailed, and uh, it should walk you through the exact process of assembling this battery. I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside for now. We can also set this front plate out of the way for now. And I can also remove this. First step is to insert the fiberglass sheets on the bottom and the sides. The less in width ones will go on the bottom and the larger ones will go on the sides. Next, we have a large stack of rectangular sheets. We'll put one of these on the back of each row. And then as we add our cells, one of these will go between each set of cells. The instruction booklet has a very clear depiction of the exact orientation these cells go in, where the positive and negatives go. Uh, we will have the positive up in each row for the first cell. Cell, 
cell, spacers, cell, cell, spacers, cell, cell, spacers, cell, cell, spacers, cell, cell, spacers, cell, cell, spacers. Uh, now at this point in the build, I am realizing that four of these panels are slightly thicker than the rest. So I'm guessing the four thicker ones are supposed to go at the end. Uh, so I need to swap out these spacers at the start here. Cell, cell, spacers, cell, final cell, spacer. All right, with those cells in, this case sure is looking great. Look how perfectly flat they are. In fact, they are so flat that uh, there's actually some space left here at the end. And there's so much space in there that the foam they sent doesn't even fill it completely. So I'm gonna have to find something else to fill that space, but I made these little sandwiches out of the remaining epoxy board and the piece of larger foam to slide down in there. With this end plate fully tightened down, you see how I can easily slide these plates in. So it does really need a few additional pieces of epoxy board or some other spacer in there. Let's run through a real quick voltage check here. 3.25. 3.25, so every cell is at 3.25 volts. And the PCB that says PCB1 will go on first, and it should be the one with the black connector. And I'm making sure none of the ring terminals are caught underneath. And the second one says PCB2. Now the cases of cells themselves actually came with these rigid solid bus bars here. But of course these layered flexible ones are way better. So we're definitely going to be using these. Up next we're going to be connecting the balance leads for the balancer. I'm actually going to leave this balancer off for now. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not. But since these are brand new pristine cells, I don't really see a reason to connect this active balancer other than the initial provisioning step here. Uh, but once it's all balanced out, in my opinion, you shouldn't need this. So I'm actually going to leave this off and I'm gonna jump down here to where you connect the red balance leads. Again, they have a very nicely done diagram here that labels them B1 through B15 and shows exactly where the balance lead should be connected. As I set each balance lead down, I'm gonna put one of these serrated flange nuts on and just run it down by hand for now. My torque wrench is set for approximately six newton meters. You can see I've got an insulated uh, socket here on the end. And I'm gonna slide this heat shrink over just to protect the handle. Making sure I know exactly where the grip point is because if your hand is too far up or too far down and it's not on the actual grip handle that will affect your torque readings. Now I did already torque these down off camera so they shouldn't be uh, turning too much if, if at all. Here we go. I'm ready to put the front panel on, but before I do that, I did go through all of these screws here and make sure they were all tight. I'm also going to remove the zip tie from the temperature sensors here just so I can run those up the battery. That's our main negative there. Okay. Oh, this is heavy for sure. I am double checking the front just to make sure the circuit breaker is shut off and the on off switch is shut off. Looks like we're good to go there. It's going to be a little tight here. So this is the main positive and it has to go over on this post. This is the main negative and it has to go on this post. That means the leads have to be crossed over. Let's go ahead and put the negative on and I uh, got a balance lead here as well. And I'm just going to run a nut down by hand here in case I have to make any adjustments, then we'll come back and torque it after. And I'm gonna try to spread them apart a little bit so it's not putting tension on the crimp of the lug. So I've got the main positive. I have the positive power lead for the BMS. Then I have a balance lead. Next, I'm ready for the final link here that's going to put these two packs into series. Uh, I've double and triple checked all of the wiring, all of the connections. I've got my insulative gloves on, I've got my safety glasses. Going to very carefully place the final bus bar down. Don't forget the balance lead, I almost forgot the balance lead there. There is now a sufficient amount of voltage present here that I could get hurt, such as if I laid my hand across these terminals or these terminals. Uh, so I will be using insulative gloves anytime I touch this going forward. Lastly, I'm ready to plug in the balance leads. It's very important to make sure I plug the correct balance lead into the correct PCB. So the balance bundle with the black lead will go into PCB1. 
and you'll notice the balance bundle for PCB2 consists of all red leads. This is explained on page two of the user's manual. First, I'll connect the balance lead of lower potential, which are cells one through eight, or PCB1. Next, I'll connect the balance lead for PCB2. I ran the temperature sensors up the center of the battery pack there and affixed them to the cells at four different locations. And if we did everything right, we should be able to turn on our battery. Looking good. So we'll go to menu, running data, down to cell volt, and the cells are all at 3.25, exactly what we saw with our multimeter. I've got my Ames 48 volt lithium iron phosphate charger connected here. Battery is on, breaker is on. That is one heck of a breaker for sure. And we're charging at approximately 17.7 amps. Our capacity test finished at 326 amp hours. Now that was at a very low C rate. I ran this test at 15 amps and that's primarily because this electronic load is limited to 800 watts. At a 51.2 volt battery, that's pretty much 15 amps. It's like 15.3 or somewhere around there. And that test took 21 hours and 43 minutes. That's by far the longest test I've run with this e-load yet. Now this BMS did shut off completely when the capacity test finished. So let's make sure we can turn it back on here. Looks like we're sitting at 44.60 volts. And uh, they do appear to be balanced very well at the lower end as well. Yeah, they're all 2.75 to 2.81. There's really nothing bad to say about this case. It's very easy to assemble. I especially like that they have all of the components on the front panel already installed for you. Remember with the eel case we assembled, there was a lot of little pieces and little screws and you had to put everything together yourself. This kit is ready to go. You pretty much just add the cells. No review would be complete without at least one friendly suggestion. I love the multi-layer bus bars. Those are pretty much my go-to bus bar for any battery project at this point. However, there are versions out there now that have a dedicated screw, an M3 screw, for connecting your balance lead to the bus bar. That way you're not putting the balance lead under the same nut that also holds down your bus bar. There's one downside to these large cases, and that is that this thing is heavy. I'd estimate the weight of this case to be around 250 pounds, fully loaded with 314 amp hour cells. I'm not moving it myself. I don't think two people are moving it. You really need a, one of those hydraulic lift tables. Uh, assemble it where you're going to use it and you won't have to worry about moving it around. I'm gonna have to disassemble this one to get it off my workbench upstairs and out to my battery shed and then assemble it again, unfortunately. I will leave more information down in the video description if you would like to learn more. Vicky was my point of contact at Bass and Green. Feel free to reach out to her with any questions as well. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.